Let's document. Join me as we cover breast ultrasound protocols on this edition, documenting a normal exam. The first step to scanning a breast ultrasound exam is understanding what type of ultrasound exam you're doing. There's two types of breast ultrasound exams, a screening breast ultrasound and a targeted breast ultrasound. For a screening breast ultrasound, the ultrasound is used to screen the breast tissue and or the axilla for the presence of breast disease, and it looks at the entire breast. Indications for a screening breast ultrasound are a patient with dense breast tissue a high-risk patient that's unable to undergo a mammogram or an MRI, a patient with a mental or a physical limitation that's unable to tolerate a mammogram or an MRI, a pregnant patient. When patients are pregnant, we generally will start with an ultrasound exam first to reduce the risk to the fetus. However, you can do a mammogram on a pregnant patient. You just shield the abdomen and the pelvis. The next type of breast ultrasound exam is known as a targeted breast ultrasound. And rather than looking at the entire breast, this type of ultrasound is targeted to a specific region of the breast and or the axilla. And the purpose is to answer a specific question. Indications for a targeted breast ultrasound are to evaluate a patient's symptom, to follow up a mammogram finding or a finding from another type of imaging study like an MRI, or to follow up a prior ultrasound exam, such as a six-month follow-up. First, let's talk about the protocol for a screening breast ultrasound. And this is the protocol when the exam is completely normal and you have found zero pathology. It's important to know what images to take. The first thing that you need to do is to split the breast into quadrants, the upper outer quadrant, the upper inner quadrant, the lower inner quadrant, and the lower outer quadrant. And you are going to scan each quadrant in both breasts both the right breast and the left breast in both the radial and the anti-radial planes. For each quadrant, you're going to document two negative images. A negative image means that it's just normal breast tissue. And it's really important in these images to make it look like normal breast tissue because you've already evaluated that tissue and you've determined there's nothing there. So you're saying to the radiologist, hey, I've completely looked through this breast tissue and there's nothing there. And your negative images demonstrate that to the radiologist. Really important to not have shadowing in there that could mimic a mass or a pseudo mass. Fat lobules love to look like pseudo masses in the breast, so really carefully interrogate your negative images to ensure that it all looks like normal breast tissue before you take the image. For these negative images for each quadrant, you're gonna annotate which breast you're in, you're gonna annotate which quadrant you're in, and you're gonna annotate your transducer orientation. For instance, for the right breast Breast, I would start with right breast, upper outer quadrant, and I take a radial image, and then I would do a right breast, upper outer quadrant, anti-radial image, and then I'd move on to my next quadrant. And I take a right breast, lower outer quadrant, radial image, and a right breast, lower outer quadrant, anti-radial image and go through all the quadrants, documenting your two negative images for each quadrant, and then switch over to the opposite breast. I generally tend to like to scan the right breast first. However, that's just a personal preference. It doesn't matter what order the breasts are scanned in, as long as you've covered all of the breast tissue. As I move to the left breast, I would then do my left breast upper outer quadrant radial picture, my left breast upper outer quadrant anti-radial picture, and then move through all the various quadrants just like I did for the right breast. It also does not matter what quadrant order you scan in. You can do it in any order. However, you want to position the patient properly to best visualize the breast tissue. I would generally position the patient into a lateral oblique position with a wedge pillow behind their back to scan the outer part of the breast and generally a supine position to scan the inner portions of the breast. I would generally do both inner quadrants and then do both outer quadrants or vice versa. Okay, so we're continuing on with our screening breast ultrasound protocol and this is for a normal exam when you've already evaluated all the tissue and know that everything's normal. Next I would move on to the subareolar region. This is annotated SA and this is the tissue that's back behind the nipple and you want to scan the tissue that's back behind the nipple in both a transverse and a sagittal plane. 
When you've looked through that tissue and you've ensured that there's nothing hiding back there, you wanna document two negative subareolar images and you wanna annotate them with which breast you're in, SA for subareolar, and also your transducer orientation. For the right breast, I would say right breast, SA transverse, and then right breast, SA sagittal. And then the same thing for the left breast. There's two ways that you can take these negative images. You can take the negative subareolar image where you're angling away from the nipple and not including the nipple in the picture, or you can take the image with the nipple clearly visualized in the picture. If you take an image with the nipple in the picture, you need to place the word nipple on top of the nipple on the image. That annotation must be there. So it's not somehow mistaken as a mass. I prefer to angle away from the nipple and take the image without the nipple in the picture only because the nipple produces such strong shadowing that it obscures some of the tissue. And I just, as a personal preference, like to see the tissue behind the nipple versus having it obscured by the posterior shadowing. However, it's most important that you follow the preference of your radiologist. Okay, so moving on to the next section of our screening breast ultrasound protocol, and this is for our normal exam. The next section that we're gonna look at is the axillary tail. This is the normal extension of breast tissue that extends up into the axilla. This breast tissue is connected to the upper outer quadrant of the breast. Most commonly, I will document this area as I'm scanning the upper outer quadrant of the breast, just because I'm already in that region. This is a very crucial area to ensure that you have evaluated because it's not uncommon for a breast cancer or a mass to hide within this tissue because it is breast tissue. You wanna ensure that you scan both axillary tails bilaterally and you wanna scan them in the radial and the anti-radial planes. It's really crucial when you're doing a breast ultrasound that you scan in radial and anti-radial planes because this is going to demonstrate the breast pathology in the most accurate shape. If you use sagittal and transverse planes in the breast tissue, it can underestimate the size of the mass since most masses are ductal in origin and the ducts follow a radial course in the breast. For your axillary tail, you want to document your two negative axillary tail images. This tells the radiologist that you fully evaluated that tissue and you did not visualize anything in that area. And you want to annotate those images with which axillary tail you're in, either the right side or the left, and then also your transducer orientation. For instance, for the right side, you would say right axillary tail, and you can abbreviate this as AX for axillary, and then the word tail, and then uh, radial, and then the next image would be right axillary tail anti-radial. And then do the same thing for the left side. Now I get a lot of questions about the subareolar region of the breast. Why would I take my negative images in a a sagittal and a transverse plane if the best way to scan the breast is in a radial and an anti-radial plane? And that's an excellent question. And the reason is because unless you find a pathology back behind the nipple, it's really hard to figure out what plane is radial and what plane is anti-radial unless you're aligning those scanning planes behind the nipple with an actual pathology. Now let's say I find something at the 10 o'clock position. Then it's really easy to figure out, okay, this is 10 o'clock radial and this is the 10 o'clock subareolar anti-radial image. However, if I'm just taking a general subareolar picture, it's really hard to figure out, well, what's radial and what's anti-radial because you're not in a specific quadrant of the breast and there's no reference point. So unless you have a pathology there to use as a reference point to which plane is radial, you definitely want to use sagittal and transverse just to document your negative image because then you can actually tell what is sagittal and what is transverse back behind the nipple. Now, if you have pathology, pathology behind the nipple, you want to document that pathology in radial and anti-radial planes. And your radial plane will be radial to the mass, and your anti-radial plane will be anti-radial to the mass itself. All right, moving on to the next section of our screening breast ultrasound protocol. And this is for a normal exam, and that means you've evaluated everything and it is normal. There's no pathology that you've visualized. The next section we're going to talk about is the axilla, which is abbreviated AX. I've included this section because it's important to know how to document things in the axilla. However, some breast centers will include the axilla within the screening breast ultrasound protocol, and some breast centers will exclude the axilla as part of the 
screening breast ultrasound protocol. So it's important to follow the protocol of your site. For the axilla, you wanna scan the bilateral axillas in both the low, the mid, and the high axillas. And for the axilla, you wanna use the sagittal and the transverse transducer orientations. After looking through the entire axilla, if everything looks normal, then this is how you would document your images. You wanna take two negative axilla images and you wanna annotate these with which axilla, either the right or the left side, and the transducer orientation. For instance, for the right axilla, I would say right axilla, sagittal, and then right axilla, transverse. For these two negative images, I take the images without any lymph nodes in the picture, just demonstrating the normal tissue that's in the axilla. And that's demonstrating to my radiologist that I have carefully looked through all the tissue that's in the axilla and I have not visualized a mass. Next, I wanna carefully evaluate all the lymph nodes that I can visualize in the axilla. And usually these are gonna be our level one lymph nodes. After I've carefully evaluated all those lymph nodes, if they all look normal, then I want to document one normal axillary lymph node. And this is demonstrating to the radiologist that I have evaluated all those lymph nodes and they all look normal. To document a normal axillary lymph node, first, I would document a sagittal lymph node image without measurements, and then a sagittal lymph node image with two measurements, both the length and the height. And note that you really want to follow the longest lie of the lymph node. If that longest length longest lie of the lymph node is not exactly a horizontal position, that's okay if it's slightly oblique, as long as I'm getting the longest length. And then I wanna take a sagittal lymph node image with color Doppler, demonstrating that hyalur blood flow pattern. Next, I'm gonna move on to my transverse plane, and I wanna take a transverse lymph node without a measurement, and then a transverse lymph node with the last remaining measurement, which is the width, and then a transverse lymph node with color Doppler image. Note, it's not important which transducer plane you do your measurements in. You can do two measurements in a transverse plane and one measurement in sagittal, or you can do two measurements in sagittal and one measurement in transverse. The most important thing is that you are doing a length, a width, and a height. One of the biggest mistakes that I see new sonographers making is that they like to do a length, a height, and a height. A length measurement should be horizontal on your screen, and a width measurement should be horizontal horizontal on your screen and a height measurement should be vertical on your screen. That's how you know the difference. So you should have two horizontal measurements and one vertical measurement. If you have two vertical measurements, then you've done two heights and you are missing a whole dimension of your lymph. Okay, time to move on to a targeted breast ultrasound protocol. Note that this is for a normal exam. That means that you have evaluated the area of concern and it is normal. In a moment, we'll talk about what to do if you discover something along the way. For a targeted breast ultrasound, you're evaluating the area of concern. The most important thing when doing a targeted breast ultrasound exam is to figure out why is the patient there? Are you following up a previous ultrasound exam? Are you following up a mammogram finding? Are you evaluating a patient's symptoms? A targeted exam is answering one of those questions. So determine your reason for exam, and this is going to tell you where your area of concern is, what area of the breast you should be scanning. And a targeted breast ultrasound looks at one specific area. For this example, we're using the right breast upper inner quadrant. This is where our area of concern is. If you've evaluated the area of concern and it's normal, you want to document two normal images, which is also known as a negative image directly over the area of concern and you want to do that in both radial and anti-radial planes and you're going to annotate this as which breast you're in the clock location the distance from the nipple and the transducer orientation an example of labeling of this would be right breast two o'clock four centimeters from nipple radial and right breast two o'clock four centimeters from nipple anti-radial after you have taken two specific negative 
images directly over the area of concern, you next want to evaluate the entire quadrant that the area of concern is in. For this example, I want to evaluate the entire upper inner quadrant of the breast, and you want to scan that in both the radial and the anti-radial planes. Once you've determined that that quadrant is completely normal, meaning you did not find any pathology, you want to document to your radiologist that not only have you evaluated the area of concern, but you've also evaluated the tissue around it, which is that quadrant. So you want to take two negative images of that quadrant as well. You're going to annotate these with which breast you're in, the quadrant you're in, and the transducer orientation. For this example, I would say right breast, upper inner quadrant radial, and right breast, upper inner quadrant anti-radial. Interested in more videos on ultrasound? Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and tune in for our next video on Wednesdays.